Welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave. And welcome to Episode 9, How Starship Will Refuel on Mars. Please hit like and subscribe. It lets myself and YouTube know you're enjoying these videos. Today we're going to go over why SpaceX chose the fuel they did for Starship. Also, we're going to go over how they plan to refuel once they land on Mars. There are several different types of rocket fuels that are used for spacecraft. There are only a few that are commonly used due to their performance. The most commonly used fuels are solid propellant, hypergolic, LP1, and hydrogen. SpaceX didn't even consider solid propellants due to their constraints. They're basically a light and flight product. Once that candle's lit, it's going to go. Next, they're very difficult to throttle. They're all or nothing. Also, once the fuel is exhausted, they cannot be restarted. Next is a hypergolic fuel. With hypergolic fuels, once the oxidizer is introduced to the fuel, it ignites immediately. SpaceX uses this for their launch escape system. This is a volatile mix. We found that out the hard way with the first Crew Dragon. So that option was definitely a no. This left SpaceX with just a couple options. One of the first options is RP-1, or Rocket Propellant 1. RP-1 is basically a highly refined kerosene. This is used quite often because its cost is lower than other rocket fuels, but it can't be made on Mars. Last but not least is the good old liquid hydrogen. Volatile, yet stable enough under pressure it could be used. Fulfilling one of the main requirements is it can be produced on Mars by extracting it from the water that we know exists there. This can be done by a method called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the process of producing hydrogen and oxygen from water. This is done by placing an anode and a cathode in water and applying direct current. Oxygen is produced on the positive anode, and hydrogen is produced on the negative cathode. Approximately twice as much hydrogen is produced as oxygen. Both hydrogen and oxygen are both needed for rocket propellant, so this is a good thing. This is where the problem comes in. Using hydrogen, the amount of hydrogen that's needed to produce the thrust that's required is a lot higher than with some other fuels. Also, the cost of hydrogen is quite a bit more. Then we run into the last problem. Fuel transfer. Transferring this from a fuel tanker in orbit or transferring it from a fuel depot on Mars can become extremely dangerous. So this is three strikes against hydrogen and it's out. So SpaceX had to find a fuel that would fulfill all the requirements. First, it would have to be cost effective when refueling on Earth. Next, it would have to be able to be transferred easily from container to ship. And last and most important, it would have to be able to be manufactured on Mars. This is a tall order. What type of fuel can be manufactured on Mars that also has all of these attributes? I'm sure Elon had all those engineers racking their brains to try to figure this one out. But finally they came up with methane. Very cost effective, it can be transferred easily, and most of all it can be manufactured on Mars. Wait a minute. Methane? Hmm, cows, cows on Mars. Cows fart 30 to 50 gallons of methane a day. Hey Elon, we solved your methane problem. Hmm, maybe not. Anyway, just a thought. Methane's molecular structure is one carbon atom combined with four hydrogen atoms. Now that they know they're going to use methane, the question is how will they manufacture this on Mars? First, 
they'd be landing a starship on Mars. This starship will have what's called a Sabatier reactor on board. This is actually similar to the process of manufacturing hydrogen without having to deal with the problems of the volatile gas. First, they would need to mine water ice, either from the soil or from the Martian poles. We would be taking this water and doing a similar thing using hydrolysis to produce hydrogen and oxygen. The difference is we'd be taking the oxygen from the process and storing it for oxidizer for the return trip. Then, using the Sabatier reaction, it would take CO2 that's found in the Martian atmosphere and combine hydrogen with it. Then with extreme heat, this process would then in turn produce methane with the only byproduct to be water. This water could then be fed back into the system to produce hydrogen and oxygen again. This would produce the methane needed to fuel Starship. The one drawback to all of this is the power that's required for splitting the hydrogen and the oxygen, then recombining the hydrogen and the CO2 into methane. It's been determined that 60% of the power that's produced on Mars will go for this process. 